creation things that God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome to the celebration today as we celebrate the 15th Sunday in our time. We also celebrate the 245th anniversary of our independence. And I wish you all a happy Independence Day. Some of you may ask, how do I know it's 245 years? It's easy for me because my first class in America was the 8th of class on July 4th, 1976, your 2000th anniversary, and I was just for daily priest. So I celebrate my 45th anniversary. So it's the 45th anniversary of America. So, so this time, 45 years ago, I celebrated my first Mass in New York, in Queens. But as we begin today's Mass, we give God thanks for the gifts that He gives us, especially the gift of our country, the gift of its, that each man is created equal and each one is given an equal opportunity and the gift of freedom. And especially the gift of freedom to profess our faith. Not all countries have that freedom and many people are persecuted in many places in the world because of their faith. And as we begin this prayer of thanksgiving, we thank God for the gifts that we take for granted. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the compound of heart. Lord, have mercy. You promise pardon and peace to those who seek your forgiveness, Christ of mercy. And Lord Jesus, you make the secrets at the right hand of God our Father, Lord, have mercy. But may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
so that they may return to the right path. Give all of who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house. They shall know that a prophet has them among them. The word of the Lord.
But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I would rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses, in order that the power of Christ may dwell within me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, I then am strong. The word of the Lord.
The Lord didn't say that he would convert them, he wouldn't help them, but he said he'd be with them in his ministry. Now when his ministry was over, the people know that he was doing God's work and that people would know about God. In the second reading, Paul himself, and that was all of us, Paul said that he was given a weakness in his body. So he would become too elated because of all the gifts God has given him. The visions, the power of preaching. But he said, he prayed that God would take away this weakness from him. This pain from him. And the Lord said to him, I'm with you. And then he realized that is through his weaknesses, through his failings, through insults and hardships, God's message is carried out. In your weakness, you are strong. Because in our weakness, we realize God is with us. And in God, we can do great things. Hold on to that. In my weakness, I find strength in God, because in God I can do all things. All of us have weaknesses. Just as your spouse, they tell you about weaknesses. They tell you about failings, but it's still proper to them. And they find that in their weaknesses, they find the gift of love. And that's what makes the marriage strong. They were able to put up with each other's weaknesses. That's the strength of the marriage. Because it comes from God. In my weaknesses, I find my strength in God. I have weaknesses as well. I was at a reflection about four months ago. I was celebrating Mass in the evening and the priest there said, in the homily says, we all have crosses in our lives. And it's through the cross we find Christ. And he said to me, John, do you have any cross in your life? And I said, yes. From the beginning of elementary school to today, I have a tremendous cross. I you know what you said, what? I said, I'm dyslexic. I didn't know when I was young, but it caused me pain, it caused my family pain, and it still causes me pain today. And it's a simple pain. Sharon Bond Editor reminds me of something. Have you got your word ready for Tuesday? When I was in high school, I used to hate writing essays. Because of the writing, the spelling, forming the words. And I said to her, You're like my high school teacher. Get me to write an essay for Tuesday for the people. So, I still have the cross today. But, God gave me a greater gift. He gave me the gift to talk, to preach. And I can preach without notes. I can preach from the heart. And I learned that a hard way as well. And as only as I went through my priesthood, I was looking back how God gave me that gift. So, it's in God's in our weaknesses we find strength in God. And then we go to the gospel. Jesus, the greatest teacher of all. And when he went to his hometown, they rejected him. Even though they said he was a great teacher, they wouldn't believe that he could help them, teach them. And what the gospel says, he was amazed at their lack of faith. Their lack of trust in God. 
All you could do there was lay his hand on a few, a few poor sick people who he probably knew and loved him. But for the majority, they rejected him because of their lack of faith. And that's what the second reading tells us. Don't be lacking of faith. And don't be worried about your weaknesses or failings because it's in our failings, in the crosses we have in life, we find strength. And it's like you in marriage, it's in the weakness of your marriage that you find strength in each other, and that strength comes from God. I'm content with weaknesses and insults because when I'm weak, I'm strong. Those who have died 
especially for Gabrielle Rodriguez, Stephen Holshue, Jose Perez Jr., Karen Gomez, and Pontiana Guadalupe. For God's gift of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. For Rhea Baker and Ayafi, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For our personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Good and loving Father, you reach out to us with your love. And you call us to respond by having faith and trust in you. Continue to guide us in our weakness and strengthen our faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.
and may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time is betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he drank a chalice, once more giving thanks and giving to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. Look not on our sins, 
Brother the faith of your church and greatly grant her unity and peace in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
and a, a reception to all afterwards to celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Carmel. Our Lady of Carmel has appeared prominently over the years. Carmel is based in the Holy Land, it's the mountain of the Holy Land, where hermits, where hermits used to live. And when the Crusaders went there, some Christians began to live in hermitages and they it out for the Lady of Carmel. And then when they discovered the hermitages was there to the time of Jesus, and when he reported them, they went right back to the time of Ezekiel. And we remember Ezekiel was the one who discovered the presence of God in the cave and the whisper of the wind. And the next thing to celebrate would be the 26th of July, the feast of our patron saints, St. Joseph and Anne. And this year, thanks to your generosity, that weekend our altar will be celebrated with beautiful roses. Also this year, for the first time, Pope Francis has made the feast of St. Joseph and Anne, the feast of grandparents. And he asked us to celebrate the feast of grandparents on the 25th of July. That's the day before the Feast of St. Dan. And so we have a blessing for all grandparents at the 10 o'clock Mass. We do something special there for all grandparents at the 10 o'clock Mass on Sunday, July 15th. But if it the 26th, we have our own celebration here at 10 o'clock, and we have a big celebration at all afterwards to celebrate the Feast of St. Jokonan in honor of our parish. These are just a few things happening in our parish. I'm just delighted to tell you that our faith formation coordinator will be starting work on the 5th of July. We've got to send somebody good, I hope. But we still need a maintenance person. So we should pray that God will send us a maintenance person. Because the work is getting very difficult and very trying because of the wet weather and everything. So we need a maintenance person. So we thank you for your prayers. I thank you for your generosity, for your kindness, and I thank you for being here and celebrating our Independence Day. And you have a wonderful day, and go home and enjoy. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in peace to the greatest living gospel.